Hey guys, Peptide Professor here. Today we're going to be showing you how to reconstitute your peptides, which will typically come in a lyophilized powder form when you order it for research purposes. First thing you wanna do before you get started with anything is to make sure that you have a nice clean surface to work with. Um, you wanna minimize any risk of bacterial infection. So make sure you have a clean surface and then always just lay down a clean paper towel on top of that. And then everything that you'll need to reconstitute the peptides is right here. So first you wanna have your sterile alcohol prep head, and then you'll be using a disposable insulin syringe, which is a one milliliter syringe. And I like to use the 31 gauge, five sixteenths inch insulin syringe. Okay, and that should obviously be in a sealed package when you take it out of the box. If for any reason it's not sealed, you wanna make sure that you dispose of that immediately and take a new one. Then you'll also have your reconstitution solution, okay? So that is a 1% benzyl alcohol solution with bacteriostatic water. And then of course you'll have your actual peptide which comes in the lyophilized powder form. It's a very fine powder, so it's not highly visible. Okay, so we're all set and um, we'll take it from here. All right, first thing we're going to do is use our alcohol prep head, which I actually already did, and wipe the top of the bacteriostatic water. If it's a brand new bottle, you will pop off the cap and it's already uh, sterile underneath that, so you won't need to wipe it the first time, but I've already used this one. So I alcohol swab the top, and we're going to do the same thing. <clears throat> Just rub it for about 10, 15 seconds or so. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the actual peptide. So we simply pop off the top, and we can discard that and then just give it a quick wipe with the alcohol prep pad. Again, it's already sterile, but I like to just wipe it anyway. And we'll let that dry. In the meantime, we're gonna open up the insulin syringe. You're going to take this top cap off, okay? And if you're not familiar with these, the one milliliter insulin syringe is 100 units. Okay, so one milliliter is 100 units, which is also known as cc's. So a cc is simply a unit. And what we're going to do to reconstitute our peptide is we're going to withdraw three milliliters of bacteriostatic water. So the three milliliters would be three full insulin syringes. And we're going to inject it into the peptide vial carefully and slowly. So this peptide is BPC-157. It's a 10 milligram solution. So we're going to reconstitute with three milliliters of bacteriostatic water. All right. So what we're going to do is remove the cap. And I like to withdraw a full milliliter of air and then inject it into the bacteriostatic water relatively slowly and then keep the needle inside the bacteriostatic water vial turn it upside down and then you can withdraw again we're doing 100 units or one full milliliter the reason that we inject the air in is because there's a negative pressure inside of these vials and it makes it a little bit easier to withdraw the liquid when you first inject air. So we've got it down to 100 and then I'm just going to turn it back over and then withdraw 
a syringe from the bacteriostatic water. Set that aside for the moment. Okay, so we've got our one milliliter of bacteriostatic water in the syringe, and we're going to insert that into the peptide BPC-157. Okay, so these lyophilized peptides are vacuum sealed. So when you insert the needle into the vial, there's a negative pressure. So you're going to feel it pull the bacteriostatic water into the vial, okay? So you don't want to inject it too quickly. So in other words, you wanna keep your fingers here so that you can gradually hold the needle without it splashing the water into the peptide. So the peptides are very fragile. So what you wanna do is never do it this way so that it splashes down into the peptide. You want to actually aim the needle into the corner of the vial and then slowly let the water drip down the side. And you can actually rotate the vial slightly side to side so that it's mixing as you're okay. inserting. So again, you hold two fingers here and then two fingers on the vial. Okay, so you're going to see as I insert this in on an angle, it's going to start pulling the water from the syringe into the vial and nice and slow. So I'm actually using my fingers here to just gently squeeze so it doesn't go too fast. And I'm just kind of guiding it in, okay? And we're just gonna rotate this around a little bit. So it's going in nice and slow, looking good so far. And we're good, okay? So you're going to gently remove that. I like to actually, instead of pulling the needle out, I always pull the vial away from the needle instead, okay? Like that. Otherwise, sometimes the needle will bend as you withdraw it from the vial, okay? So we're going to do that same exact thing two more times because we want three full milliliters to reconstitute the 10 milligram solution of the peptide. So I'm not gonna show doing that again because it's the same exact procedure, but we'll just do it two additional times. Okay, so I've now reconstituted the peptide with three milliliters of bacteriostatic water. And you can see even after just a couple of minutes, it looks like it's pretty much mixed up now. So you don't see any uh, white powder at the bottom. It's just a clear solution. Okay, so I'll usually let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes before actually uh, withdrawing the peptide for use. If you're not going to use it right away, you want to make sure that you refrigerate the peptide. They should always be refrigerated after they've been reconstituted. When it's in lyophilized form, it does not need to be refrigerated, so you can just uh, leave it at room temperature. What you also wanna do is when you're ready to withdraw the solution for injection, as I mentioned earlier, the lyophilized products are vacuum sealed. Okay, so in order to actually access the peptide from the vial, it's oftentimes necessary to inject a full syringe of air, like we kind of did earlier with the reconstitution solution. So you'll pull the syringe all the way down to the bottom, which is 100 units or one milliliter of air, and then you will insert it into the peptide vial, inject the air in first, and then that will allow you to withdraw the peptide in reconstituted form into the syringe much easier. Uh, if you don't do that, typically you'll have problems withdrawing the peptide from the vial just because of the negative pressure difference. So it's important to do that when you are ready to inject. Um, I'm not gonna show giving an injection, um, but that's a pretty good description. And you can kind of do your own research if you wanna figure out how to do that. As far as a dosing protocol, so typically for BPC-157, you would want 500 micrograms of the peptide for each injection. Uh, so you can definitely start lower than that the first few times uh, just to be safe. So if you want to do 250 micrograms, that's suitable. You could even do 250 twice a day. But if you're just doing one daily injection, 500 micrograms 
uh, is the recommended dosage. When you have a 10 milligram vial of the peptide, that's essentially 10,000 micrograms. And if we are putting in three milliliters of water, that's um, 300. So you would take 10,000 divided by 300, and that gives you 33.3. So for each unit that you withdraw on your, on your insulin syringe, it's going to be 33.3 micrograms. So if you took 10 units, it would be 333 micrograms. So in order to get the 500, you would simply pull the syringe up to the 15 mark, okay? And if you wanted 250 microgram injection, you would simply do half that, which would be 7.5 units. So that might sound confusing, but it's actually very simple. If you're not sure, if you're not good at math, you can always just use an online peptide calculator and you can punch in uh, the specific numbers for the peptide you have. In this case, it would be 10 milligrams. And then you also have to enter in the amount of reconstitution solution, which is three milliliters. And then the peptide calculator would automatically calculate how many units to pull the syringe to. So if you're not good at math, that's probably uh, a good option for you to use. Otherwise, once you get the hang of using it, it's pretty easy to make the calculations in your head. When you're ready to do your injection, you always want to make sure that you wash your hands prior to that and also just double check that you've cleaned the area that you're going to be working on. And always, always, always use a sterile alcohol prep pad to wipe off the top of the peptide vial and also to wipe the area of the injection before and after the injection. Never reuse syringes, so once you do an injection, you will recap the needle like so and dispose of it in a sharps container again these are single use syringes so you will never uh, use a syringe more than once well i hope you guys found that useful and if you did please like comment subscribe and we'll be putting out some more videos in the future on various peptides this was more of just an instructional video for uh, beginner peptide users because we all know it can be pretty daunting the first time around if you haven't had any experience doing an injection. But like I said earlier, once you do it a few times, it's very simple and um, you get the hang of it. So uh, don't forget, like and subscribe, and hopefully you guys will come back for more information down the line. And we'll be putting out some more interesting videos on various different peptides, the benefits they offer, and how to actually use them to uh, increase overall health and wellness and longevity. Thanks guys.